3D. You're going, if you haven't tried drawing in 3D, you learn really quickly why we use things like CalcPlot 3D it as much. It's not as easy as drawing a graph in 2D. But I do want to hit a couple of things. Um, we're going to start off in rectangular coordinates. We will talk about different coordinate systems uh, later this semester. But a little bit of review. In two dimensions, we identify a point as X and Y. So it is some horizontal and vertical distance away from the origin, right? So we have some point, it's some X, X, Y, and it lives out in the two-dimensional plane. The same thing is basically happening in 3D, but we have another axis we have to think about, all right? And so this is our conventional way of drawing the 3D axes with the X and Y coming out. Sometimes you'll see the Y go uh, completely horizontal. <coughs> Excuse me. The Z is, we think of as the vertical. And then we have the X kind of coming out of the board at us. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, like I said, it's the conventional way. Um, and typically, if we draw something, we only draw the positive axes because as you can imagine, if you start to draw the negatives, it gets really convoluted. Now, a point here now is in three space. So it has a X, Y, and a Z component. So it still has an X, Y in the X, Y plane. And then it's some height above that X, Y plane. So, you know, one way of conceptualizing what a point looks like it's the corner of some kind of rectangular box. Again, drawable, but not as quick, not as easy to draw as it is in 2D. And in, you know, before those lines were in there, right? Where is that point? Is it what side of the y-axis is it on, right? Is it in the x positive x or is it in the negative x? So there's a lot of visual things that aren't as uh, simple as they were in 2D, which is why we're not gonna spend a lot of time drawing in 3D here. But we need to be able to recognize that stuff and that's where CalcPlot 3D is gonna come in. So what we're gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you a few uh, standard shapes. I wanna get you just thinking about this stuff and we're gonna play around with CalcPlot 3D. So what I need to do, give me just a sec, I got two. We need to think about what these shapes are gonna look like in 3D. For example, the plot of Z equals one. Now in 2D, if it was just Y equals one, it makes a horizontal line, right? Well, think about what a line would be in 3D. What do you think a line is in 3D? It's a plane. There, there, is, there is a line in 3D that would be uh, 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 just a line that would kind of look be like a rod. But the way a, a 2D line transforms into 3D is as a plane. So in CalcPlot 3D, and for those of you guys at home, if you haven't brought it up, you can just uh, search for CalcPlot 3D. It'll be one of the very first options. And this is always the standard graph that comes up, okay? And the equation for it, you can see over here on the left-hand side. <clears throat> when we're talking in 3D, now, when we're in 2D, a lot of times we say a function is y equals, like y equals x squared, uh, something like that. <clears throat> so in 3D, the, the equivalent of that is z equals. So if we want to plot the plane of z equals 1, we just bring up function z equals. They have a default in there. And if you guys ever want to play around, they have a whole bunch of, these are all pre-built ones if you want to see what they look like. But for today, we, want to, we just want to know what z equals 1 looks like. It is a plane that goes through the point where z equals 1. So what this is, is a collection of points that are all one unit above the xy plane. So that's what z equals 1 is going to look like. <clears throat> so what would have been a line in 2D is a plane in 3D. And we'll see that with linear functions as well. Now, y equals one will also be a, a, a plane, except now it's gonna be confined to the place where y equals one. And if you go to select and you scroll down to function, you see how there's some other functions here at the bottom. 
Here's where you can put in one for y equals. And that gives us a plane of y equals one. We can do the same thing for x equals. So we can do any of the three variables. We can, so we can do a function in turn as z equals, excuse me, x equals or y equals, all right? Now we're not gonna hit everything that Calcplot 3D can do today. I just wanna give you enough to, to do what we were gonna look at today. We'll, you know, when we get into more interesting stuff, we'll, we'll revisit Calcplot 3D, but I'm gonna show you a few things that are pretty cool. Here's a cool one. All right, we want, the, we want to talk about the plot of x squared plus y squared equals one. What does x squared plus y squared equals one look like in 2D? It's a circle. Tell me more about that circle. Radius one, where is it centered? Origin, right? Okay, if there's nothing else going on, when we transform this to 3D, what happens with that circle is it basically adds in the z and it comes in and out of the board, right? Yeah. So what this creates is a cylinder. Now let's talk about how to graph that though, because here's the thing. And uh, oh, sorry, um, and here's the thing, and this is what you want to remember: when it's x equals z equals or y equals, we just saw how to do that. Notice this is not solved for x, y, or z. This is what we call an implicit equation. So if you go to your select menu, you see implicit surface. We'll go there. They've got one in there for us, but that's not what we're looking for. Let's put in the one that we're doing. E equals one, boom. There is our cylinder. But if we look directly down the XY plane, we're gonna see exactly what you guys told me, which is that circle of radius one. So anytime you're dealing with a, an equation that is not solved for a variable, you can always do it as an implicit surface, all right? Be the same way we do spheres. This is a cool one, z equals x squared plus y squared. Well, we know what z, we know y equals x squared is a parabola. So z equals x squared would be a parabola. Z equals y squared would be a parabola. So we put those in together and actually it's already in there for us. This is called a paraboloid, a th basically a 3D parabola. And you know, right now it is perfectly round as you can see, but if you put a factor in, in front of one of these, you get an elliptical paraboloid. Bum, bum, bum. There's, there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff and that's why, you know, the next little bit I'm going to go through kind of quick because I want to give you guys time to play with this program because it's, there's just so much cool stuff you can do. And, and it is fun, trust me. Uh, it, you guys will be using this at home. Um, and uh, it, remember, you don't have to draw any of this stuff at ha by hand when, because this exists. This stuff did not exist when I took this class, so I'm jealous of you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had to do this stuff in chalk. <laughs> you guys think you had it tough. All right. Let's, uh, all right, I want to talk about a few things. We'll come back to CalcPlot 3D um, a little bit later. But I just want to go over some stuff just so we have some common ways of talking about this. I am going to give you some, um, some formulas, some definitions here. Do not feel like you have to write any of this stuff down. Again, all the slides are available up and more. All the, so everything I'm about to talk about is up there. I don't want you trying to write things down because I've gone a little bit fast. I also do not want you memorizing the names of these graphs that we're gonna go over. That's not what's important. What I want you, what you're gonna do when you play with Calcplot 3D is see, oh, hey, when I switch this parameter, this makes the graph do this. So that when you go see some function um, at some point, you'll be able to match it to the graph because, oh, it's got these characteristics. It's round here, it's got a curve here, it's got a hole here. That's what we want to do. Okay, first guy is the distance formula. This is in 2D. This is our Pythagorean theorem. This is nothing new. Well, 
You know what the distance formula basically gives us is the formula of a circle around the center x1, y1, because what this is, is a collection of points that are all the same distance from x1, y1. We have a distance formula in 3D. It's going to look very familiar. It's that distance from the origin out to our point. Notice it was almost, these are exactly the same from our 2D. Now we have this third part here. Why am I telling you this? Very, you know, we might use the distance formula in 3D. It's not hard. It's, it, it is just the Pythagorean theorem, but it's the same idea. If we set D to be a constant, then, all we're, then what we're looking at is the concentration of all the points that are the same distance from a single point. That creates one of our favorite 3D graphs, the sphere. All right, and just like a circle, we can move the sphere, the center of the sphere around. The sphere, just like the circle is one of our easiest shapes in 2D, the sphere is one of our easiest shapes in 3D. <clears throat> so if we had a, a sphere with a center of A, B, C, this would be its formula. Now with the square root, Think about what's going to happen. We're only going to get positive R values. So the way this is written would only give us the top half of the sphere. If we square both sides and do an implicit surface, that's when we get the whole sphere. Just like it was, just like with the circle and that cylinder. So that's going to be the sphere of radius R centered at ABC. So I'm going over some basic shapes because these are going to be the ones that we revisit most often this semester because what we what we do in here is we look at stuff in a, in a little bit more simplified form to show that all the theorems work. Then you go out and you work on much more complicated ones, but you know the, how the theorems work and how to use them because you've practiced them in simplified situations. Um, Oop, forgot about that. <laughs> cylindrical surfaces. We already saw one with the cylinder. A cylindrical surface is basically when a 2D graph becomes a 3D surface. So, and this is, guys, this is one I can't emphasize this enough. You're going to see some definitions in here. You do not need to know these definitions. So don't feel like you have to memorize them. I just put them in here because they're interesting. So there's a generatrix. That's the curve that generates the surface. So our cylinder that we saw earlier, the circle's the generatrix because that generates the whole cylinder in 3D. That generatrix moves around a directrix. For those of you guys who have seen conics, that term should sound familiar. That's what creates our parabola, our circle, all our conic sections. Those 3D lines that, that make the 3D surface, those are called rulings. So where you're going to see these is in equations that only have two of the three variables. Remember the, the cylinder was x squared plus y squared equals one. The z was missing. So it was a circle in 2D. When we added that z axis, all it did was go in the z direction. That's what these cylindrical surfaces are. So here's, a, here's kind of an example. We saw x squared plus y squared. There's your generatrix, the circle. And then these are your rulings, these lines in 3D, okay? That's all that means. Again, there's not a, you're probably not gonna hear me use those terms again uh, all semester generatrix or, or rulings, but you know, if you happen to see them in, in a text or something, I want you to just be like, oh, okay. I, I know what those are, I've, I've seen them before. Here, uh, Z equals X squared. This is another good example. Notice there's no Y. So this is going to be a parabola in the xz plane. But when we add that y axis, it's going to come in and out of the board. And then those, those, those are the rulings are these parallel lines that uh, create the surface. So that's just what those terms mean. All right, last thing again, guys, I do not memorize this stuff, but you're going to be plotting some of these in Calculate 3 d you're going to have my notes to go off of. There's not going to be something on a test that says, you know, which of these is an ellipsoid, which of these is a hyperboloid. But quadratic surfaces are pretty cool in 3D, some of the shapes that we can get. And they all have a basic form. 
This is a quadratic. Remember quadratic in uh, two dimensions was AX squared plus BX plus C. This is what it is in 3D because we have the extra variable. This is the general form of a quadratic. I know it's messy and it is not something you need to memorize, okay? But having different coefficients are gonna create different types of curves. Ellipsoid, hyperboloid of one sheet, two sheets, elliptic cone, elliptic paraboloid, and hyperbolic paraboloid. Those are the terms I do not want you to memorize. I'll never ask you that on a test, all right? So when we look at a 3D graph, because it's very hard to look in 3D, a lot of times we do, what we do is we look at the traces. The traces are when we set one of the variables to be zero uh, to cancel it out or set it to a constant to cancel it out. Because what that does is it turns our 3D graph into a 2D graph. And we can say, oh, in 2D, it's a parabola. So I'm looking for something with a parabola in its shape. Or in 2D, it's a cubic. So I'm looking for something that has a, a cubic in its form in the plane z equals one. So that's one of our ways of taking the 3D function and making it 2D so that our, our visually we can better understand what's going on. <clears throat> All right, the ellipsoid is our most basic one. It's basically based off the sphere. This is its general form. And it looks, it's gonna look something like this, like an A, that's an ellipsoid. So this is when all three, to, all three uh, terms are positive and the equation equals one. And all three traces are ellipses because if I were to cancel out, let's say, let's say we zeroed out the Z term, we'd have an ellipse in 2D, X squared over A squared plus Y squared over B squared equals one. That's what a trace is. It's like when you zero out a term, what do you have? A hyperbolite of one sheet, notice what changed. We now have a negative right here, just the single negative. And that changed to a hyperboloid where now along these vertical planes, we have two hyperbolas. But if you look at along the top, we have an ellipse. Because if we zero out the Z, we have the formula of an ellipse. But if we zero out the X or the Y, we have the formula of a hyperbola in 2D. So all three uh, degree two terms are present. Again, this is not stuff I want you to memorize. You can use, anytime you're looking at this stuff, you can absolutely use the notes for it. So we got the, that's, uh, so again, this is how we use the traces to help us break down a 3D object to 2D, which is much more manageable visually. All right. Two sheets, hyperboloid of two sheets. Notice, now there are two terms that are negative. What does that do? It breaks the parabola into two pieces. All right. And now we have one trace as an ellipse parallel to the third plane instead of in it. And then we, we still have two traces that are paraboloids, but it's that break in the, the, that the one sheet versus two sheets. That's what's happening. Um, because of that extra negative, now we have a break between the two sheets. Elliptical cone, we look at what's happening here. We have a plus and a minus, but now it's equal to zero instead of being equal to one. So what that's doing is that's forcing us to hit the origin, which is what's making these conical shapes. Now you've got ellipses on bottom and top. So if we look at the traces, you know, we've got the ellipse and then the other two traces are hyperbolas, but they hit that point at the origin because it's equal to zero. So it makes it more of a cone as opposed to that nice curved hyperbola shape. All right. An elliptical paraboloid. Notice Z is not, no longer squared. So what that creates is the paraboloid that we saw earlier and it's elliptical if the A and Bs are, and Cs are not uh, in ratio with each other. So this is gonna happen if you have two degree two terms and, and one non-degree two term. And the hyperbolic paraboloid, this is actually a pretty cool one. It's a lot like the uh, 
the uh, elliptical paraboloid. But what makes it hyperbolic is the plus turned to a minus, and it creates a saddle. Because what's happening is we got parabola, parabola, but then we have also a hyperbola in there when we zero out the z. So, guys, again, I, I can't emphasize enough. I'm not trying to get you to memorize all these characteristics. This is way too much. I just wanted to introduce you to these because they do show up in the problems and in the text. And it does still give us a way to start to um, reason with these 3D objects that we're seeing now for the first time. Looking at the traces, looking for hyperbolas, looking for parabolas, looking for ellipses. Okay. One thing, one last thing I want to show you in Calcplot 3D. Easy fix. Okay. Now, we just looked at the, the hyperboloid, the paraboloid, and all that stuff. And did you notice in the slide how, you know, I had the A, B, and C? Now, normally those are constants, right? And that makes the different shapes. One of the cool things about Calcplot 3D. So if I wanted to do, let's do just basic one. Let's do an ellipsoid. That's going to be an implicit surface. This is already almost, yeah, let's leave it as a, a hyperboloid. You can actually put those in. So A squared, this is pretty cool. Uh, B squared and C squared. And when I hit enter, there's my hyperboloid, but look at what it did for me. I can now use sliders and stretch, you know, so you can see what changing A does. What does changing B do? What does changing C do? And, um, you know, I didn't go, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time going over all the uh, things you can do in Calcplot 3D, but notice right now I'm in between 2, 2, 2, and negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. Um, right here is, okay, if I wanted to see a little bit more of the graph, Here's where I can change, format the axes. All right, so now it goes out to five and negative five. Um, so you can change the axes in there. We'll look at what they, some of these other ones do later here, like adding a point. Um, we're not, we don't need that just yet, because right now I just want to get you playing with some of these curves. All right, and so we're gonna go into the worksheet for 